Hi, you 10. Here we go today. Um, today we're looking at force and motion. Now, this predominantly covers the higher tier work, but I think it's really important that everybody has an attempt at this because it does cross over onto the foundation tier and it embeds lots of the other ideas that we've been talking about. However, uh, there is also an associated SAM learning task. Now, like what we've done with other lessons, there is you can work through this at your own speed using the online textbook. And today's lesson is page 128 to 129. Okay, so 1 to 8 in your margin. Can you just quickly pause the slide and answer the following eight questions? Number one, stopping distance equals thinking distance plus breaking distance. Number two, weight equals mass times gravitational force. Number three, velocity is the event. Is it the velocity it eventually reaches when it's falling? Okay. Uh, where the frictional force is equal to the weight of the object. Inertia is the tendency to stay at rest or uniform motion. The formula for resultant force is resultant, resultant force equals mass times acceleration. Resultant force equals mass times acceleration using the equation 60, 6 times 3 equals 18 newtons. The area under a velocity time graph represents distance. And explain the parallelogram of forces. It's a scale diagram, underline the word scale, of two force vectors. So previous lessons, stuff that we're expecting you to know and hold on to and use in today's lesson. Weight, equal, weight equals mass times gravitation, gravity. Mass is the amount of stuff in an object. Weight is the force measured in newtons by a newton meter or a spring balance. Mass is not a force. Okay. It's measured in kilograms with a balance. The object reaches constant velocity when its frictional force acting on it is opposite to its weight. That's called terminal velocity. Stopping distance is the vehicle depends on thinking and braking distance. N Newton's second law of motion tells me that acceleration of an object is proportional to the resultant force, inversely proportional to the mass of the object, force equals mass times their acceleration, Resultant force equals mass times acceleration. Inertia mass can be defined as force divided by acceleration. So let's move on to momentum. I know I'm talking really fast today. Sorry, too much coffee. However, I want to get through that. So momentum. So momentum, when we think about this, is the important part about when we're moving and how difficult it is to stop and potentially change direction. Okay. If you think about somebody playing rugby and they have to duck, duck and dive and move up and down the pitch, they're going to find it really difficult to stop at certain points if they're traveling quite fast um, and changing direction. Okay, Momentum of a moving, moving object is equal to mass times velocity. The unit for momentum is kilograms per meter squared. And here's my beautiful equation triangle, because you know that I like them. Uh, momentum has both size and direction, because it's so therefore it's a nice vector quantity that we do like a vector. And give, looking at our worked example, a uh, sprinter has a mass of 50 kilograms and a velocity of 10 meters per second. So we do mass times velocity equals 50 times 10. Hopefully you don't need to take your shoes and socks off to calculate this, but it's 500 kilograms per meter squared. Possibly we'll need a calculator to do the rest. So grab a calculator or use your handheld digital device to uh, utilise this if you're doing it at home. If you're in school, please check, ask for a calculator because handheld digital devices are not allowed. Momentum and give its unit. Ta-da! You can all read. You're great people. Momentum equals 40 times 60 equals 240 kilograms per meter squared. Momentum equals 80 times 5, which is 400 kilograms per meter squared. Meters per second, sorry. I keep saying meters per squared. What wally? Sorry. An object of a car moves with the same momentum as a rugby player. Velocity equals 40 kilograms. And we're rearranging the equation this time to do 400 divided by 800 equals 0.5 meters per second. See that? Set it right. Uh, and calculate the velocity of a 0.4 kilogram ball, which has the same momentum as a rugby player in question number three. 
and velocity equals 40 kilograms divided by 0.4, which equals 1,000 meters. So let's think about factors that are affecting momentum. A lorry travelling down a motorway, not unusual about that. What affects the how much momentum my lorry has? Velocity, how fast the travel, basically how fast the lorry is going. Mass, how much stuff the lorry is carrying and how much it weighs. Yeah, how much material it's made from. And the conservation of momentum. So when two or more bodies collide on each other, their total momentum remains constant, providing there is no external force. It's a bit of a complex idea, so let's break that down. Total momentum before the collision is equal to total momentum after the collision. Okay, because remember, energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. Remember that principle. So we have two cars, both crashing to each other. One is traveling at 10 meters per second and one is traveling at 12 meters per second. They both have the same weight. One is white, one is black. Both have airbags. Let's not worry about the passengers at this point. So what happens? So what you will see is that the car, the black car will carry on moving, okay, because it has a greater um, velocity. Okay, so there's some points that we need to remember, okay, and we're going to use a nice example. Um, if you're a skateboarder, you need to know that your skateboard can shoot away from you when you jump off of it. Its momentum is the opposite direction to your own momentum. Useful. Now we've got a nice gender stereotype here. We've got a nice heavy man dressed in black and a nice girl that's significantly lighter dressed in pink. And they both push away from each other. So we need to think about that their momentum is equal and opposite to each other. So when they collide, they both move away from each other in equal and opposite directions. Think about tackling in rugby. So it is equal to mass times velocity, momentum. Again, nice gender stereotype, I love this in science. Obviously a man playing rugby, he weighs 80 kilograms and he's traveling at seven meters per second, therefore his momentum is 560 kilograms. Another man, man B, okay, who's also playing rugby, weighs 82 kilograms and he's traveling at nine meters per second. Now, already man B has a greater velocity, therefore their total masses if you add both together, it gives me 162 kilograms. Their combined momentum is 178 kilograms per meters per second. Their combined velocity is 1.1 meters per second. Okay. So, when you fire a rifle, the explosion causes the bullet to fly out of the barrel and it causes the rifle to push back onto your shoulder. We call this recoil, okay? Any of you been clay pigeon shooting or air gun that's what it is and again and man with a gun no gender stereotypes we need to sort this out guys um the velocity of the bullet can now be calculated using p which is momentum which is mass times velocity okay a bullet of a mass the bullet of a mass of 0.1 kilograms is fired out of a rifle of a mass of two kilograms okay which recoils the velocity of one meters per second what is the velocity of the bullet? So we know that the momentum of the bullet is equal to the momentum of the rifle. Okay, so MV bullet equals MV rifle. We know that um, on the right hand side of the equation, we do two times one. Hopefully, again, no shoes and socks needed to be taken off here. We know that that's two. Therefore, to calculate the velocity of the bullet, we need to do 2 divided by 0 0.01. Glad I got that right. That would have been all good. And that would give me 200 metres per second. Okay? Because we're balancing the left and the right-hand sides of the equation for both objects. Ta-da! So, conservation. Whatever happens on one side happens on the other. Now, if something has a bigger mass, it might move away with a smaller amount of velocity. Okay, so let's have a look at these example questions. Two cars are racing around the Teville gate, don't know where that is. Car A collides in the back of car B and cars stick together. Okay, what 
do this what speed do they move at after the collision well this is an attractive car green car a speed of 20 meters per second mass 80 kilograms i think i prefer car b but there you are has a speed of 50 meters per second and a mass of a thousand kilograms okay they then hit like that and rear end each other no pun intended and we need to calculate their joint speed their mass collaboratively is 1800 kilograms so the momentum before is equal to momentum afterwards therefore we know that a thousand times 50 plus 80 times 20 is equal to 80 times v and we're trying to work out v okay so we're going to do 5000 plus 1600 okay do work that out gives me 36.7 meters per second all right happy with that question one write down the correct word and phrases to make the following sentence true pause the slide now Here comes the answer. It's exciting. Red boxes floating in air. Question two. Write the numbers from the following four vehicles in order of momentum from lowest to highest. So you need to calculate their momentum, which is mass times velocity. All right, let's put them in order. So our lowest one is truck four, then truck three, then truck one, then truck two. Number three, an ice skater has a mass of 67 kilograms moving it to the east at four meters per second. She collides with a stationary man of, of 70 kilograms and she grabs hold of him to make sure she doesn't fall over. There's a final momentum in the elastic collision what direction did the travel after the collision? Give your answer to three significant figures. The key point there, three significant figures. So the man's stationary, so he doesn't have any velocity. She has a mass of 67 kilograms and she's moving east. So 67 times 4 da, 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 is equal to... So 286 kilograms per meters per second. Man has no momentum. The momentum after is equal to the combined mass times unknown velocity. Therefore, it's equal to 1.96 meters per second. Question four. The playground floor under some swings with a rubber safety surface to prevent accidents. You know that foamy stuff that smells disgusting, made out of old tires. Anyway, a child with a mass of 45, it's quite a heavy child, 45 kilograms, falls off the swing and hits the ground at a speed of 5 metres per second. Calculate the momentum of the child as he hits the ground. Clearly show you're working out. So what do we need to do? Forty-five times five equals two hundred and twenty-five kilograms per meter per second. Once the child slows down and stops in 0.3 seconds, calculate the force exerted by the ground on the child. Show clearly how you work out your answers. F equals rate of change of momentum equals two two five divided by 0.3 equals seven hundred and fifty newtons. Rubber tiles are used to reduce the impact of the force on the child. Explain how the rubber tiles reduce the risk of the child being seriously injured when they're falling off the playground equipment. So it increases the time for the child to stop and it reduces the force on the child so less injury. Two points there. Make sure you've written those down for me. So let's have a go at doing some questions. Which of the following is the correct unit for momentum? Yay! kilograms per meters per second. Question two, what is the momentum of a trolley of a mass of four kilograms moving at a velocity of 20 meters per second? 80 kilograms, well done. A body moving at eight meters per second has a mass, if it has a momentum of 200 kilograms per meters, 
25 kilograms. Hopefully we're just rearranging the equation. So a body has a mass of 500 grams. If it has a momentum of 12 kilograms meters per second, what is its velocity? 24 meters per second. The total momentum of a system before collision is 120 kilograms meters per second. What is the total momentum of the system after the collision? 120 kilograms per meter per second. The body of a mass of 20 kilograms moving at 8 meters per second collides with the sticks with a stationary body of 12 kilograms. What is the speed? Will it the combined body 5 meters per second? A body of a mass of 40 kilograms moving at 12 meters per second collides with a stationary body of 20 kilograms. The 20 kilo, 40 kilogram body moves at an immediate stop and the 20 kilograms starts to move. At what speed will the 20 kilogram body move? Uh, 24 meters per second. When they're talking about bodies, they're not talking about dead bodies, by the way. They're just talking about an object. And we talk about the body of an object being like the bit where the mass is con concentrated. Don't think we're just throwing around bodies. Uh, number eight, paintball gun of a mass of two kilograms fires a paintball of a mass of 80 grams. The paintball moves out of the gun with a velocity of 200 meters per second. What will the recoil of the velocity gun be? Eight meters per second. So key points from today's lesson. There has been a lot, okay? And I will um, add some questions on Sam learning, but these are today's key points.